Welcome to Professionalism and Customer Service in the Healthcare Environment, Key Elements of Effective Communication. This is Lecture B, Nonverbal Communication. The objectives for this lecture, Nonverbal Communication, are to define nonverbal communication, describe how nonverbal communication functions in the human communication process, and describe specific dimensions and give examples of nonverbal communication. Nordhaus and Nordhaus refer to nonverbal communication as a means of communicating that does not use words. Body language is a type of nonverbal communication, as is touch, appearance, and the use of space. Nonverbal communication can also be vocalization other than words. You're probably thinking if it's nonverbal, how can it be vocal? Examples of vocal communication would be a scream, clearing your throat, a sigh, a groan, or even a whistle. Nonverbal communication is very important. Nordhaus and Nordhaus described a study that found up to 93% of communication effectiveness is determined by nonverbal cues. Aligning your verbal and nonverbal communication is also important because the message receiver could be confused or suspicious if the message sender verbalizes one meaning but, with nonverbal cues, suggests a different meaning. To be most effective, the verbal message and the nonverbal message must match. According to Nordhaus and Nordhaus, individuals in an interaction use nonverbal communication as an additional means of information exchange. Nonverbal communication can help share emotions and can support or contradict the verbal message. Nonverbal communication can also help a person maintain his or her self-image and confirm or validate relationships. One of the most important functions of nonverbal communication is that it reinforces the expression of feelings and emotions. Like other professionals, healthcare professionals use the nonverbal expression of feelings and emotions to convey aspects of their inner states to others without having to use words. The nonverbal message does not always support what is said. Sometimes, in fact, it contradicts the verbal message. For example, when a health IT trainer is interacting with a clinician who is anxious about using the computer, a warm smile and calm body language might serve to communicate empathy and competence in a stressful situation. On the other hand, a scowl might communicate frustration or anger, even when the spoken words don't indicate frustration or anger. It's important to recognize that with health IT, you're always an advocate for some type of change. Change often creates stress for some individuals. Being empathetic to the users, stakeholders, and others on your team goes a long way toward alleviating some of the stress inherent in change, even if it can't relieve all stress. A second function of nonverbal communication is that of shifting and regulating the flow of messages between people. Because nonverbal communication can convey level of engagement, perceptive communicators may end or shift a conversation based on the cues received by the listener. For example, if a clinician gazes toward a patient exam room while a health IT analyst is obtaining feedback on a particular software program, the analyst should pick up on the cue that the clinician would like the interaction to conclude very soon, and they had better wrap things up. It's important to remember that clinical staff are continuously being asked to do more with less time, so be respectful and judicious with their time, and you'll be much more successful. Similarly, health IT professionals need to be conscious of their own nonverbal communication so that they don't convey that they are judging the competency of the client they are assisting. This is particularly true of more experienced physicians and nurses who don't necessarily see computer systems as intuitive or adding value. It will be your job to approach them with openness and humility when teaching them how to incorporate health IT into their practices. Positive attitudes and courtesy facilitate success. The third function of nonverbal communication is maintaining our self-image. Stated another way, we tend to act in accordance with who we believe we are and how we typically act in a given situation. For example, physicians in a clinical setting may see themselves as needing to project confidence and competence to their patients. If they are struggling with a given system, their need to project competence and confidence often manifests as an attack on the system. They may hold their hand up in a conversation, tell you that they need to take care of the patient, not the computer, or even scowl at you. Recognizing this need to maintain self-image, the health IT professional should be patient and helpful, should not criticize or patronize the client, and if possible, should meet with the client in a non-clinical setting. Through nonverbal communication, individuals confirm relationships. 
Individuals should always carry themselves in a professional and competent manner. Make sure you understand the subject matter of a given meeting well. Speak with confidence, and when you don't know an answer, simply say that you'll look into it and report back. Write it down as a to-do for yourself. And you'll be sending the nonverbal message that you take the question and the relationship seriously. As described by Nordhaus and Nordhaus, there are five categories of nonverbal communication. Kinesics, proxemics, paralinguistics, touch, and environmental and physical factors. Let's begin with kinesics. Kinesics is the study of physical movement as a form of communication. Components of kinesics include gestures, facial expressions, and gazes. For example, kinesics can include symbols or gestures, such as pointing your index finger in the air to signify, my team is number one. Other examples include nodding your head to indicate yes, and shaking it side to side, indicating no. A key distinction here is movement. Crossed arms could convey feelings of defensiveness, while open arms can convey approachability. Facial expressions can be a smile, frown, raised eyebrow, wrinkled forehead, open mouth, a wink, a yawn, and so on. Facial expressions can communicate different emotions or characteristics. A smile, for example, can convey trustworthiness. Facial expressions often change during an interaction. Gaze is a subcomponent of facial expression and plays a major role in effective communication. Nordhaus and Nordhaus describe research studies that suggest that people make direct eye contact between 50 and 60 percent of the time in one-on-one -on -one conversations. The average length of time of a single gaze is three seconds, whereas mutual gazes last about two seconds. Gazes longer than that are not effective in the professional setting. Remember that good eye contact in a professional setting does not require lengthy gazes. In fact, lengthy gazes may be interpreted as inappropriate staring or aggressive behavior. The second category of nonverbal communication, proxemics, refers to how people use and move in the space around them. Nordhaus and Nordhaus categorize space in four ways, intimate space, personal space, social space, and public space. Personal space includes surroundings and is important because it provides individuals with a sense of their own identity, territory, and control. For example, in many families, a parent or guardian will have his or her favorite chair at the family table or a preferred parking space in the garage. Distance between communicators is also a component of proxemics. Nordhaus and Nordhaus describe data from the book The Hidden Dimension by Edward T. Hall. The researchers found that personal space varies depending on the relationship between individuals. Intimate space has the shortest distance, 6 to 18 inches, and is found between people in a very close relationship, such as romantic or life partners. The common distance between friends or loved ones, personal space, typically ranges from 1.5 to 2.5 feet between individuals. Note that this distance for comfortable space can vary across cultures. In contrast, Social distance, which is typical in work settings, is usually in the 4 to 12 feet range. Though again, this can differ across cultures. In public settings, such as in a classroom, the distance between individuals ranges from 12 to 25 feet. It can be important as a health IT professional that you notice what's going on in terms of space with your team, particularly in an implementation setting. These are some of the most stressful times in a person's career. If, in response to the stress, one of your team members or someone else is invading the space of another team member and intimidating that person during a go-live, you should intervene in the situation. Paralinguistics refers to the vocal sounds that add further meaning to the spoken word. According to Nordhaus and Nordhaus, there are three components of paralinguistics. The first, intensity, is considered the power component, or the volume of the communication. The second, Pitch height refers to how high or low the voice is. Musical examples are bass singers at one end and sopranos at the opposite end. Variation in tone, the third component, refers to changing pitch height. In general, the less emotionally charged you are in tense situations, the better. Keep your pitch even and the volume down. You'll have plenty of time later to commiserate with your colleagues and vent. The fourth category of nonverbal communication is touch. Touch can take many forms and elicit a variety of meanings. Touch is primarily associated with personal friends and loved ones. Aside from a handshake, touch isn't widely used in Western society, 
so it should not be used in the professional work setting. Environmental and physical factors are also dimensions of nonverbal communication. Environmental factors can include lighting, constant or intermittent noise, color of surroundings, and furniture placement. According to Nordhaus and Nordhaus, a person's perceptions of the environment can suggest feelings of formality, warmth, privacy, constraint, distance, and familiarity. This concludes Lecture B of Key Elements of Effective Communication, Nonverbal Communication. In summary, nonverbal cues play a significant role in communication. Eye contact and facial expressions convey all types of information from interest to attitude toward the other party. Be aware of personal space. Getting too close to someone can make a person feel uncomfortable or intimidated. Avoid raising your voice and pitch, which can heighten emotion. Aside from shaking hands, refrain from touching others in the workplace. Be mindful that physical and environmental factors, such as noise, can also impact the communication process.